My name is Emily Wellborn and I'm an Education and Outreach Assistant at the Watkins Museum of History. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some recycled material flower crowns in honor of the 1970 project and the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. If you have any old paint shirts or um, fabric laying around that you can't think of to use for anything else, this is perfect. You can also do this with leftover ribbon and newspaper if you want to. But if you're doing it like me and using um, t-shirts, all you need is three strips that can wrap around your head because we got to make sure they're flower crown length. If the fabric that you're using is a little stiff, make sure that it can wrap around probably twice. We're going to be braiding these so you want to make sure you have plenty of material to use. You are also going to want some cut out flowers. I made mine out of old t-shirts that I can't uh, donate or recycle. You're also going to want a safety pin and maybe something to hold down your strands while you're braiding. It'll make your life so much easier, especially if you're just learning how to braid as I'm sure some of you are. You can also add some fun things like beads or uh, paint, anything that you have around the house. We're hopefully not going to have to buy anything for this craft and it's hopefully things that you already have just lying around that you can't use for anything else. With that, let's get started. I'm so excited about this. Okay, as you can see, I have my materials laid out and ready to go. I have my three pieces of fabric cut out. They're all about the same width, but if yours aren't, that's completely okay. We can work with what you have. You'll also see that I have my flowers cut out. I have two different colors for mine, about six flowers each, but you can make as many flowers or as few flowers as you want. It's completely up to you. And the good news is you can make more as you go too. First things first, I'm going to line up my ends and I'm going to tie them in a knot, just like that. Okay, next we're going to hold down our material so it doesn't go anywhere while you're trying to braid. You can use a safety pin to attach it to some material that might be heavier that can hold it for you. You can attach it to your pant leg while you're braiding. You can use tape if you want to. For me, I'm going to use a very heavy book to hold it down. All right, it looks like we're ready to get started braiding. If you don't want to do braiding or we have some little hands that can't, that's completely okay. You can only use two strips if you want and just twist them around. It'll work just as well and you'll still end up with something just as pretty and you might actually save some material too. For our more able hands, we're going to learn how to braid today if you don't already. If you know how to braid, you can go ahead and skip forward a little bit. So the trick to braiding is you're just taking alternating ends and switching them over each other. If it helps, you can put tape on the end and color it so that you know which one's which. But for me, I'm going to just go as is. So to get started, you take one outside piece and you fold it over the top. Then you take the other outmost piece, hold it over the top in the middle. And there we go, we're starting to get our braid pattern. And you keep going like that. So one more time from the right over, and then the left over, and then the right, and then the left. And there we go. If you have a little scraggly bits from the ends of your fabric, that's okay. You can clean it up at the end or you can always twist it in so you can't see it. Now that we have our braid started, I think it's time to add some flowers. So first I'm going to go with my little red flowers that I have here and I think I'm going to put it in the middle. Also make sure all of your flowers have a cutout in the center so you can put them on. Now, my flowers are not, not cut out the prettiest, and I hope you'll forgive me. But you know what? I think the big loopy flowers that are a little abstract make it look a little bit prettier. You can see them a little bit better. So maybe you have cutting like me and your flowers aren't the prettiest. That's okay too. All right, now that our flower is on there, we're gonna keep braiding. So I just came from the left. So now I need to go to the right. I flip my flower out of the way, but it's okay if you don't. Okay. Left towards the center, right towards the center. There we go. 
I'm going to add another flower to one of my strands. You can do this if you want, but you don't have to. You can wait a little bit. You can put multiple flowers on one strand. You can put all your flowers on one at, at once for one big flower. You can put your beads on here, whatever you're feeling. Just keep track of your strands so that you remember which one you left off. Of. So just one big knot. All right, now that our flower crown is all done, to tie it around your head. You use the two ends that we tied off earlier. You can tape it together. You can pin it together with your safety pin if you need to, whatever works for you. All right, mine's on and ready to go, and I like it. I hope you like yours too. I'm so excited that you guys could join me for this craft today. It was so much fun, and I hope you guys had fun too. Please share how yours turned out. I want to know what materials you used, what fabrics, what colors. If you Did you use beads, glitter? Let me know. All right, have a good day, you guys, and thank you so much for being a part of our Earth Day celebration. Museum's 50th Earth Day birthday party. We hope that you learned a little more about the history of this day, our beautiful planet, and some of the different organizations in town that are working to take care of it. The Watkins Museum would like to give another big thank you to all of our partners who helped us out today. The amazing people at Humanities Kansas gave us a grant to support this project. KU Commons presented a fascinating program that tied perfectly into our theme, Kansas Biological Survey, Friends of the Ka, the KU Natural History Museum, and the Spencer Museum of Art all created awesome videos that helped us understand the importance of Earth Day. We would like to thank you, our audience, for your patience and flexibility as we experimented with this online event. If you would like to revisit any of the videos we shared today, you can see them at the Watkins Museum's YouTube channel. We would love to hear your feedback on today's event. Send us a message on Facebook or email Will Hecox to tell us what you thought and if you'd like to see more virtual events. Visit our website to learn how to discover the Watkins online. Take care everyone and happy Earth Day!